and uh, which I, which I picked up a while ago. Actually, I couldn't pick it up because um, it's so it's oh I keep hitting the wrong thing. What have I done? Don't hit the wrong, uh, wrong keyboard. Get the wrong keyboard out of the way. Um, Miles, there is one foil I would like to play in. Can I send it to you in the chat so that you open it? Or uh, because share screen is a bit difficult because then everyone Why don't you just send it on we tr we transfer and I'll edit it in later. On on uh, uh, Ah, okay. Okay, I can send it by by email. Yeah. We transfer.com. Is it a large file? No, no, small one. I can send it by email. Simple email. Should do. It's just a find if you send it on Skype. Also possible. It it takes a while. Um, but you're looking very well. Okay. I've Send. just I've just put my recorders into record, so uh, we can chat away or do whatever. Mm. Uh, wait, I need to close a couple of windows here. That was a mistake. Opening my browser. Oh no. Not the open the browser problem. <laughs> no, then then Facebook kicks in and all the messages make beep oh, yeah. beep 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 yeah, beep and absolutely. all everything yeah. gets self activated. So I don't need that now. Okay, Miles. Uh, Merry I give you. Yeah. Uh, first of all, Merry 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 Christmas to the bases. Uh, twenty twenty conference for Christmas. So how are you doing? I'm fine. I'm actually in perfect condition. Good. That's good to hear. Actually, <laughs> I have been uh, I have been uh, trying to find the original lecture you did um, way back in 2015 about the black goo. I have it on tape, but I'm planning to because of all the YouTube things. I'm planning to sort of put out, put that all together uh, and launch it on a different channel, just in case everything goes belly up. Mm -hmm. But um, it's December 2020, and what do you want to say? What's what's the what you doing these days? Uh, we are in the middle of community building. This is one thing that occupies a lot of attention and time, and it's really difficult to tr to to deal with the different approaches people have to life, because. Um, for me and my girlfriend, it's all about self-healing and basically just watching the he the world around us heal as a reflection of our self-healing, just watching the miracles develop and uh, happen. And most of the other people have kind of a hard time with that approach. And some of them prefer drama interaction and victim perpetrator games and uh, rather being numb from all sorts of drugs and uh, soft ones, of course. Um, but still, it's kind of many, many different approaches. And we, we are in the third attempt of community building now. And the first one failed grandiosely. And uh, now we're in the third one, trying to apply some more tolerance and um, openness to other accesses to organizing oneself's life. Well, so this that's is, what's this is what's very happened. this is really fascinating because um, there's quite a few people are, tr are wanting to set something up. There's, there's this uh, idea people, uh, because of the grand solar minimum and the crops getting wet and all this stuff about, co all, we can't mention that, those these terrible things, stresses people are going through. People are buying property down in Spain, in Romania. They're setting up communities uh, and things like that. Um, could you show by example what goes wrong? What, what are the do's and don'ts? Um. My, my first observation was just from looking at communities that actually they all drown in drama-based problems. One big thing is it's all about who fucks with whom and why not with me. 
That's this is kind deal. of the, the 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 dominant topic kind of uh, people seem to deal with and the other one is that you always have those codependencies and fucked up relationships that play into the social interaction and it's all about who steals whom en energy um, so it's like the good good intention doesn't count much. The question is, what kind of people do we work with? And do they have the topics to still deal with? Or are they through with self-healing? So, so th this is why we came up with this approach that we rather start small, take in one by one, take in people one by one, make sure that they go through all the healing processes to be beyond drama interaction, to be beyond energy sucking games. And um, so that was like, like igni igniting community with a few people and twice it turned out that those who promised that they are exactly in for this, just after a while realize that it's it's hard work to go into self-healing and uh, that actually being messed up and drama-based is more convenient than um, doing the real thing. And so it, it crumbled to bits and pieces twice. And that was kind of sad because it's not about liking or not liking the people. It's just about um, different modes of interaction. And somebody who is not drama based, he can't just communicate with somebody who is drama based because it's a, it's a completely different language and then things simply don't work. So, so now we, with the third attempt, we have a structure that um, basically respects the fact that my girlfriend and I are just basically not nibbling on the last dramas in between the two of us, but towards strangers and friends, we are actually drama free. And this is kind of the, the core structure and people around us self-organize in between each other and they get as much contact to us as they want to with really funny effects like some of them get diarrhea the moment they get too close to us because the biochemistry starts to uh, to self -heal, heal and then there's an instant Herxheimer reaction that triggers uh, detoxing from the intestines and so, so people can choose freely how close they want to be to us and in between each other You've got all these drama interactions still going on because apparently they are necessary for realizing what needs to be healed. <clears throat> so, so this works much better, although it's still a bit lonely in the core. But um, yeah, this is kind of the, the last approach we took. And the real problem actually is um, people the core problems. People don't have, most of the people don't have access to life force and to divine love internally in their system. So they seek for both from their companions. And uh, this is automatically creating those energetic and attention-based scarcity games of uh, who is providing whom with energy. This is one of the basic things. And the other thing is the basic thing that is problematic is the projection issue. If some sort of drama pops up, most of the people will locate, will locate the reason for the drama in the outer world. It's always the other one that is uh, messing it up, that did a mistake, that should change to get things into a better um, uh, state and and this core acknowledgement affirmation I face the things I face because I am who I am taking over full responsibility for everything that crosses my path and realizing only if I change myself different things can cross my path as a reflection of myself this this core recognition of taking full responsibility, full self-responsibility for everything that is happening around me. Um, this is something you, you hardly find in people.
it's rare as a quality. But it does more and more appear with people, but they are it's it's still like like a, a very, very, very non-dense cluster of people, a couple of them on each continent uh, that don't have contact with each other except of um, internet relationships. So um, but i'm I'm kind of positive that in the in the nearer future, we will meet more people of that quality also in our neighborhood. So looking forward to that. I mean, that's a lot of growing up for people. I mean, yes, and yes, able, yes, are but they it's able to handle that. I mean, obviously, it's a it's a big deal. It's possible. It's possible. If I remember, like, like how how much time healing processes took a couple of years ago, going through one topic was costing half a year, three quarters of a year until it was dissolved. Um, but the time quality on the spiritual plane is so quick now that you can go through a healing process in an afternoon and it's done. It's all a question of. Are people willing to go there and do they have the right tools available to process healing in such a quick manner? And the tools can be learned. Like I, I really love to quote that website, but whoever is looking for generalized tools for spiritual health, self-healing can go to zingdad.com, to Arn Arlingham. He's uh, Cape Town based and he's offering meditative cycles like 30 day meditations where you learn the entire tool set you need to fix all, all of your trauma, all of your soul splits, integrate all of your previous lifetimes. And when you're done with this cycle, you have full memory of all the lifetimes you had on this plane and uh, every single experience is fully reintegrated into yourself. Um, and you can you can learn the tools in 30 days and you can do the job in a couple of months. So it's all a matter of what do I dedicate myself to? Am I willing to go through also the pain of actually going through the processes themselves because healing is always connected to some painful experience. It's at least or on the spot exactly the pain that caused the damage needs to be revisited. And most of the people tend to not want to go there. So this is what costs time, but it's not necessary. Once once I gathered the experience that just re-meeting those pains and getting through the healing afterwards, everything is much better. And it's only a moment, a moment of feeling something. So what? <laughs> but if you stand in front of it, it seems like a real challenge and um, not many go there and take that. So how, how do you, uh, what do people do? Or how, uh, how do new people come? How, how do they approach li uh, doing this process? I mean, who do you call? you call on the internet or, or I mean, how does this process start for those new people? Um, in, in our case, people find me because I'm available online and then they uh, whatever send an email and we start to exchange a little bit about who's who and what's next in each other's lives and sometimes people after a while of being in contact come to visit and some of them then decide to buy a house in one of the villages around so this is how the community is growing it's all basically uh, growing around my my farm in the villages around my farm. I'm in the middle of nowhere, so there are a couple of villages around and buildings are available to rent or to buy. So uh, more and more people decide to want to be part of that process and settle somewhere in my vicinity. Um, so, so, this the, is kind so of, the important thing is you're not living on top of each other. You're not in one building and somebody lives no. in one bit. This is a much more open and and is is this in east germany or, or what or what what part of the world are you talking about that's in east germany that's kind of halfway between berlin and hamburg and you're in the wonderful countryside 
Yes, yes. Small villages like 300 people per village, three to 500 people. Lot of lots of space in between, lots of forest in between. Not very dense populated area. And everyone that buys a house here automatically gets like like uh, 4,000, 5,000 square meters of uh, garden land to it. It's this type of villages that have only one road and then the lots are to the left and to the right going far into the fields, having basically enough garden land to self-supply straight up behind the buildings. So it's a it's a good uh, architectural tradition to live in a in a self supply self supplying mode. It's absolutely wonderful. Yeah, but it's it's there to find yourself. Is that right? I mean, it's it's definitely there to get creative, and being creative is always very healthy for the for the soul. And uh, I mean, I. For myself, I, I kind of like to be able to do everything myself. So on the building side, I'm laying the pipes and doing the electricity and fixing the roofs and building new roofs uh, with wooden beams. So I kind of, this is my idea of culture. Culture is what every adult can do. I'm not so much into this type of highly specialized culture where you have like like 10 million um, people specialized on something nobody else understands and then you don't communicate but you work together to do things that normally are not achievable and then you mass produce them somewhere. I mean, this is automatically leading to a culture of consumers and I more prefer the culture of producers where it's not so sophisticated, but every single item that is produced is more a direct expression of creativity. With a lo longer lifespan than the usual two years of industrial goods, and then they fall, fall apart and land on the one big rubbish dump. So if I build something, I rather build it for the next five generations and make it an expression of myself, like a cupboard or a table or a building or whatever. Is this something like the Russian um, thing? Um, uh, what's that? What, uh, you, you, um, Nastasia. Uh, no, not Nastasia. Um, <laughs> Anastasia. Uh, yes, yes, we, we run on the basic, on the basically on the same uh, idea of what a human can be. It's very close to Anastasia. Um, also, the spiritual capabilities everyone can develop with self healing. Um, it always contains clairvoyance, the ability to travel in the astral and to do things non-locally, to observe things non-locally, to be in condition-free, unlimited compassion with whatever one decides to call in. Like, um, I can sit down in meditation and say, I feel the collective of the Iraqi people. And then I just need to open my emotional body and everything that is commonly felt in Syria or in, in Iraq uh, flows through my emotional body and I can just by compassion say they're fine at the moment, they live in fear. It's For, for us it's difficult to, to enter Berlin because Berlin is just a huge bubble of fear at the moment and if you go there with an open spirit uh, and you're not prepared for that emotional uh, um, field, um, we had people from our community going there, collapsing at the cashier in the supermarket with shivering knees because the emotional fields are too strong and um, it becomes a completely different world once basically the, the topic with topics within each and every one are solved to agree to a degree where all the innate abilities of a human being come back to existence like being in compassion being sensitive and it's it's covering everything smell taste it's it's like 
we always wonder how cats can read the newspapers and dogs when they walk down a street uh, reading the, the stories of every other pet animal that has peed somewhere out of the smell of the pee. This is not <laughs> something humanity never had. It's it's something it's something that comes back when we stop polluting ourselves. Could you when explain you... that uh, again? But obviously, this is something that every pet does and things. But there, what are they perceiving? What, what's something? Oh, I could try to describe it when I have a guest that drinks alcohol and eats meat and goes to have a pee on my toilet. And even after three days, when I go into the bathroom, I could exactly describe what he did during the weeks where, when, when he was not at my place. It's, it's like a newspaper. It's, you, you, can, you can read every sin against the body out of the smell the body is uh, uh, producing. And, uh, In other words, producing by way of waste, so it gets rid of these things. Uh, the body, of course, if you put something into the body, the body is not prepared to keep that inside. So, so uh, it started starts to self clean. So it is in the sweat, and it is in the poo, and is in the pee. It's everywhere. So you can and the you breath, can, and the breath, yes. And and uh, most of the humans smell like corpses, but they don't realize because they don't even smell each other. From what they eat, day in, day out. Um, and do, we, do, do you feel that this mask thing that everybody is having to wear, is that doing even more harm to them by pushing that back it's, into them? It's, it's depriving us from oxygen, so the in, entire immune system is collapsing. Um, and the risk of bacterial co-infections are quite high, unless you change every 20 minutes. Like it should be according to the books, but nobody does that. I don't see people changing their masks. Most of them have just self-made ones, um, but they never change. And uh, yeah, the last one, my, my youngest son had a uh, strepto streptococcus in German, streptococcus, bacterial infection yes. cover covering his nose. He looked like a zombie for a couple of weeks. But no, no, this is not related to the mask. He's still blaming me for not wearing one. How do you <clears> feel that this psychology, uh, of the, you know, what what mindset people are now in with all this masks it's split. and stuff? It, and it's what's split. the intention of the people it, forcing that? Um, fear is an instrument of control. If you manage to drive people into fear, you can just suggest any solution and they will accept it out of fear. So it's just a tool to control people. And and this entire pandemic that doesn't even have an existing core anymore, because as far as I know, the thing mutated to something that is uh, has zero to close to zero symptoms, but spreads like hell. So everybody is getting e e e immunized by the harmless form of COVID. And the one that did have those nasty symptoms at the very, very beginning, it's not even uh, getting a grip on people anymore because the other, the harmless forms are much quicker and then you're immune against the not harmless ones. So the problem in my view doesn't even exist anymore. So they just keep up their narrative and they see how far they can drive people into slavery and into obeying stupid rules and they make it as stupid as possible just to see how far they get with it. I mean, uh, from the medical point of view, nothing they do makes sense. It's, it's a complete, non-scientific, 100% politic driven agenda. It has nothing to do with medicine. If, if you really look into medicine, then there is something the body does frequently, which is a self-cleaning program. You catch a cold, you catch a virus, because your mucoid skin needs to extract toxins. You know, if your liver and your kidneys does, 
do not 100% do the job, then you start detoxing a bit over the skin or over the mucoid skin. And if you have an overload of toxins in the mucoid skin, you need a virus to expel them. You need, and, and the immune system is opening that portal to make the virus replicate. This all is frequency-based self-organization of the body. So catching a flu every now and then or catching a cold is just a beautiful detoxing program. If you get a fever once a year, then the fever kills all the tiny little cancer cells that might pop up every now and then and here in the body. So it's it's a really healthy form of self-organization of the body. If you suppress these cleansing programs, you start to run around like a rubbish dump after a couple of years because you prevent the body from cleansing itself. And then, of course, if you happen to catch a cold, you run into an Herxheimer reaction and you get what they have seen now with COVID, uh, like, like this uh, um, uh, cytokine storms where where uh, the immune system is overdoing things and suddenly everything tries to to fight everything at the same time this is only happening if you basically messed with your healthy immune responses in all the years prior this is why the heavy symptoms only occurred with people that had flu shots in the years prior it's all logical but it doesn't make sense to do even anything of that because a flu is just a healthy self-cleansing program, just to start with, and then all the measures they take, like isolating people, um, uh, in isolation, being lonely, the likelihood to die from a disease goes up by 60%. That's double what smoking does and triple what alcohol does in harm, just being lonely. So they do everything wrong they can even think of doing wrong. Driving people into fear is uh, boosting the the um, probability that the body decides to activate exosomes, which is just another word for a virus. So, so it looks like they they just turn around everything that is known in science to create the opposite effect. What they from from what they pretend they want to create, and they make everything as as bad as possible. Uh, to then blame the thing on the virus after they caused all the symptoms. It's a sheer madness. It doesn't make sense in any point. And and if you want to know why they do it, just, just look into the ingredients of the mandatory or almost mandatory vaccine they want to push on us. Like the one from, from America, uh, basically sterilizing 95% of the people who get the vaccine. It's a, it's a measure of population control. How does that function? What's what do you believe there? Or what do you what do you see their agenda really is on this? Uh, they, they try to push through World War Three, but the spiritual spirituality of humanity is so evolved that the collective fields do not accept a world war. So they simply failed on getting that. There is no world war happening. So the depopulation de agenda that wants to reduce humanity to 500 million needs to find other measures to do so. So because it's not so easy to kill many people without a war, uh, apparently they just decided to sterilize everybody. And this is what, what all the microwave radiation is about. Uh, um, this is about mass sterilization and infertility creation in humans, and this is what the vaccines are about. One part and the other one, mind control, tagging, surveillance. These are the two functions of what they insert, like a test is not a test. Nobody needs to go to the blood-brain barrier with a stick uh, to get a sample of a virus. You can just spit on it and you get a sample of a virus. If you look what the patents related to sticking something up your nose are written for. This is a vaccination technique. And if you look at what you find on the stick or the tiny little uh, micro and nano devices, this is about tagging people to shut down the pineal gland. This is what I heard. I didn't have the possibility to check what actually those tiny little devices, devices on the microscope do. 
but it's not testing on on uh, on COVID because those tests don't work in any case. Send one today, send one tomorrow, you will get completely different results. So this is all within the inaccuracy of the testing result, just to to adjust the statistics somewhere. It's all mad. It's all complete rubbish. Nothing of what they claim has nor a hand or a feet. What about this uh, 2045 agenda to make us into robots and the the agenda <clears throat> to wipe out all, all organic life? Is this part of that? Not, or is not it connected, all organic. Connect, it's, connect it's, with not, things? it's not to wipe out organic life. It is to cut organic life off its collective consciousness field and reconnect it to an AI-based consciousness field. It's to disconnect us from the divine and connect us to uh, binary machine intelligence instead, which then reduces us to something that is programmable by social engineering and by technical mind control uh, utilized through transhumanistic technologies they implant in us. So this uh, are is. Are you talking? Kind of, I'm going to say. Uh, are you talking about that that material that you discussed uh, and mentioned five six years ago? This this sentient yes. material. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yes. This, this was this was kind of the beginning of discovering the single um, aspects of those technologies. By now there are like four different layers of. Um, interfaces between human consciousness and machine consciousness that that are implemented taking over every single layer of our consciousness except of heart consciousness somebody who is really experiencing himself heart based he cannot be taken over and also the pineal gland as long as it is active cannot be taken over this is why they're tagging us up the nose because then they can put some devices there to completely shut down the pineal gland to cut us off from that um, interface to, to, to the divine. Um, but I, I, I don't even feel like spreading some sort of panic on that because actually uh, the, the development we are in at the moment can't be a better one. Um, this was uh, kind of the original reason why I, I was uh, happy to be invited on on your your channel. Um, in in the last years, I, I spread all sorts of information about the spiritual realm and how it works, what duality was, and that actually Satan has left our sphere and that everything is on a good path. And at a certain point, I had to realize that I missed out on one little detail, um, which is the uh, ongoing splitting of timelines which is something crucial to understand, to, to decode reality at the moment. And this is the actual thing I would like to, to share because it explains so many things in a beautiful way that are, can be observed at the moment. First, what, what we need to understand about reality, we do have the material plane we share, like the reality we live in. And then we do have this astral realm, which is the individual, subjective, spiritual perception of the non-material reality, of spiritual things. And some people, when they open up to, to, the, um, to the astral realm, they really land in hell then you've got all sorts of demonic entities being there fighting humanity and you might meet Satan at the end of the hierarchy. Um, so there seems to be an um, astral plane that is inhabited by this dual spiritual setup creating a spiritual realm that can be described as duality with good and evil with both sides 
available. You can turn to God and pray in this realm. You can do a meditation and get calm, but you also see demonic entities trying to manipulate and take over humanity. Um, at a certain point in my life, after uh, we had worked on all these dark things in ourselves and found a path to not experience ourselves as subject to duality anymore, it looked like all these archons and Satan were all gone. We understood this looking at the astral realm as if source took them out. And this is something I did communicate because I thought that this should be the same experience for everyone. But recently I, I met people, just to, to put it into an example, a lady that came for, for consultations and um, she appeared normal and clean to me, like no entities visible, just being herself traumatized to a high degree, but being herself. And then she shared some of her art with me and looking at her pictures, at her self-expression, I realized that she must be full of archons, really breeding archons nonstop, completely polluted system. They were everywhere in her, but I couldn't see them. So the way I would interpret that is that actually in her astral realm, this dual spiritual realm does exist. So she is physically expressing this in her art. But in my spiritual realm, in my uh, astral realm, I do not see those entities because actually I live in a different one. So, so this is like the spiritual realm has already split but the material plane is still shared. And uh, it is, the, the, the astral realms are overlapping, but not like, like eight, eight billion different astral realms, but they kind of are sorted by qualities. If I meet somebody that is also not in duality anymore, I will share the same astral realm with him while all the people who are still deep in duality will see the same archons because these things used to be intersubjective. This is why I, it, it took so long for me to pop up that actually that it's not 100% inter, intersubjective, that, that it divides into layers, into different densities that have different spiritual qualities. And if I now look into mythologies and all sorts of channelings, what's about to happen, it looks like that this is kind of a preparation phase for a complete timeline split where also the material planes divert and split and humanity is going to be separated in groups of humans who go down completely different paths of reality after that split. And uh, if you look for a date, you get all sorts of different um, interesting points. One is 21st of December this year, where you get channelings that say that the third density will split off. Uh, kind of the total end of the cycle is supposed to be in 2027. Uh, February 14th, I think, or 16th. So then the last split should should be over. So so <clears throat> it's kind of a completely new concept that is so different from what we used to have as a as a um, living environment till now, basically being um, subject to one and the same reality, that also the concepts of how to relate to yourself and to others n for me needs to completely rethought and redone because if I meet somebody that spiritually is whatever in the third density uh, being like, wow, everything is so exciting over here. I just grab and take and scoff whatever I can get. And uh, all I think about is my pleasure and my experience. I don't care about anyone else. This would be a third density human. It's good if he ends up with other third density humans in a realm where, where they can experience 
what this means to live on that level of consciousness. While uh, all those other responsible people that always think that life is bad because other people um, get it wrong, uh, they will all end up in a fourth density reality at the end of the day, where they can experience that if nobody takes responsibility, nothing happens at all. So they will need to stop blaming others and start making decisions instead, which also is a perfect encapsulated environment for all those people who need this experience next. While self-responsible people also can have a realm of their own where they will be able to create a beautiful world without being disturbed by all those people who suck energy, destroy and project things on them that are not theirs anymore. And the last one, sixth density, unity consciousness, again, is a completely different game where there's no judgment at all, where it doesn't matter who does what to whom because we are all so interconnected on in 100% complete compassion that hurting somebody is as painful as getting hurt because there's no difference between you and me in any case because we can feel that we are all one. Um, this is something that can evolve into completely different spiritual qualities and it would be good if those people would share one realm. So, so it looks like creation is moving to that point of uh, uh, separating humans according to their um, resonance to what they need to experience next. And I'm not judging that it's not that one is better than the other. It's like a young soul needs different experiences than an older soul. And we just were stuck all together in this one realm for so long that we got used to being messed up by the other fractions in this duality game. Um, and to to... This was kind of just a bit of theory I, I made up myself, found bits and pieces with other people, some with channeling, some with hardcore science. But what really, really stroke my eye when I saw it is that one picture I send you, if you want to blend that in at this point. It's a crop, crop circle I found. Ah, wonderful. <clears throat> and um, um, it kind of made me shiver all over. I saw it and I realized, wow, this is something I need to understand what it is. And I just meditated like half an hour over it. It tells a highly defined story. Once you get into the language of these pictograms and and uh, find the answers how to, to translate that into the meaning, it's really, ah, really... That, that's the whole mystery of the crop circle, isn't it? <laughs> but with this one, one it's one easy... It's easy to see how they work because because I, I could more and more feel the story it is telling. And this is exactly the story of the development of consciousness realms of our planetary civilization. It's taking the entire line. It, it, if you start at the lower left, it's like a one world thing, paradise developing for a while. And then suddenly duality as a consciousness realm pops in and we have this um, duality basically merging together again to the point of let's say the event uh, when you have a dimension shift and you can see kind of the the core structure in this picture the big planet in the middle is like it's a 2d representation uh, of a Taurus morphing into a 3D representation of a Taurus. So it's it's kind of displaying a, a shift in dimensions. And then you see all these half circles as a spin-off there that actually resemble an aura, like, like if, if the material plane is this 2D to 3D or 3D to 4D shifting um, Taurus or planet or whatever, you can see the density surrounding it, the different spiritual planes surrounded it, and you can count the density by counting the number of balls on that line. So it goes up to fifth density with a tiny little idea of a sixth one. And you have one 
isolated sphere in the middle in between those half circles which might symbolize actually where the average of humanity is standing right now also where the timeline is standing right now and then you can see that everything lower than fourth dem density goes through rectangular patterns and if you look at those patterns and if you ever have seen actually photographs of matrix um, energetics. If you if you look at smart dust and you make the smart dust glow, you can see the field patterns crossing the smart dust and they all always are in a rectangular relationship to each other. So you get like energetic chess boards and they highly resemble this pictogram with the rectangular structures. So if you are in the fifth or sixth density, you will not cross matrix consciousness. You will just stay a divine being and evolve into a new timeline. This is kind of the, the text elements um, that then go straight up in the picture. If you are in the fourth density, there's a slight chance that you get around being captured in matrix consciousness. It's kind of one line bypassing it, but most of the people in the fourth density will experience uh, um, AI controlled matrix mass consciousness and the third density will have no way around that. They are all embedded in this transhumanistic experiment and will all go uh, through the experience of being a total mind slave and then after those experiences you have all these lines going straight up in the picture which for me looks like the programming of a new creational cycle. Um, like as if every group of humans with their new, new realm that is actually made for matching their needs in the best way is going to be programmed into a new storyline, a new civilization development that is appropriate to their needs and they're all different. And this very much looks to me like like introduction of tiny little creational inputs to design, form, program those new timelines. <clears throat> so, so this is what I read in this and it 100% matches actually most of the channelings I read about timeline development and splitting and uh, um, uh, this is so precise what we go through now on that visual plane that I don't think it can be some sort of coincident. Yeah, I mean, your description was so precise that not even having seen the crop circle, I get such a visual image of it. I remember being in that. It was absolutely amazing. Um, what what year was it? Because Ooh. if it's older, then the position of our current development will be much more uh, advanced now. Okay, so then we must be really quite more advanced than displayed in this picture. But then the fact that so many people added things to it would indicate that that you know what you were just saying. Uh, but but this for me it looks like the original design. It doesn't yes. look like yes. there's it hasn't anything been added. To. added. Yeah. 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 There yeah. Wasn't it must anything. be yeah. the, the first take after, yes. the, after it appeared. And there were one or two little tiny form circles at the very entrance to the field. Uh, uh, they sort of call that buckshot. Mm. And a lot of people ignore those little tiny little circles uh, which are only maybe uh, half a metre wide. And that, <coughs> that sort of has or some people you know feel that that has a an, an added significance to yeah. information yeah that, then maybe it is rather likely that the 21st of this year is a major or more major event if this is already 10 years ago at least i i, I do remember it, i think it could be as long ago as 2004 but i'd need to check that we'll 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 yeah. it's just amazing yeah. And everybody I told the interpretation till now, they all went like, wow. Um, 
because once you're in it, it's it's like self-explaining. I don't know. Amazing thing. Mm -hmm. And and the thing what, what I actually wanted to state before and now it's maybe it's clearer the question what to do next, how to find the optimal approach to reality. Well, I do. Is, uh, you mentioned you mentioned uh, just before we leave this a uh, bit. Uh, we've had a, quite a few people or certain people say that as of roundabout now, uh, in this period of time in December, there is an opportunity opening to go to the fifth dimension, a fifth reality. Mm -hmm. Does that, mm -hmm. you, you mentioned a fourth, a third, fourth, jumped up to sixth, mentioned a little bit about fifth. What, what do you think about that? This is a major opportunity for us to, to do this. It's amazing that the, the sharing what you're saying. Um, you're yeah, opening up a new um, astral realm is one thing. It is. It needs single humans who pilot this, who are the first ones to develop a quality out of themselves only. And then other people can join in by being inspired. And when there are enough that reach that consciousness type, not... Um, putting any any value to it, just a different consciousness type, um, then it's strong enough to form its own timeline or it might get strong enough to form its own timeline. The, the crucial point actually is the only thing I really can recommend to everybody is make up your mind what quality your spirit really needs to experience and make sure you get into that quality. When I self-tested myself, it was like uh, asking myself, do you really or do you want to continue experiencing duality anymore? And my entire system screamed from the bottom of my heart, no, it's enough. <laughs> I want to go home. I want to get out of this painful constellation. So for me, it was completely clear after asking myself without knowing the answer, where do, where do I want to go? And when it came to do, do I want to go into unity consciousness? It was like, whew, everything was opening up into release and relief. And this is why I know I will do everything to continue my path in unity consciousness. The only thing that kind of is still in the way is that I really love to, have, to inspire people and help people on that way to really make it. So um, I'm, I'm not completely already there, but I'm, I'm heavily pulled there. But still, this is an expression of love, uh, wishing to take as many people as possible with me, with what I can contribute as inspiration. And also, of course, I love to be inspired by those who are ahead of me on that path. And I'm looking for their contacts and 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 being close to them so so this entire love thing this seems to be for me the expression of love is let's go there together but for me the the, the goal is highly defined for me it definitely is unity consciousness and i can't give advice to somebody who doesn't want to be there if there's somebody who really enjoys duality game and really needs this experience of uh, saving people, being a victim or being a perpetrator, then this is the wrong place to be because there still needs to be experience collected for those. So if somebody really is into, yes, I want to experience duality because I'm not shaped yet, I'm not experienced enough to have a look from a higher perspective onto things, then it would be absolutely det detrimental to end up in a in the wrong timeline that is already um, unity or self-responsibility or whatever. So for me, it's just my advice is find out where you want to go. And if you're not at the place you want to be, then hurry up to get there because the time is running at the moment and no clue when exactly the, the cuts the, the trains are leaving the stations yes yes and it's not that it's becoming impossible to change the destination the only thing i can say for sure that that the number of people 
who not have found their destination yet are becoming less and less and less and less and less. So it's more unlikely to see a possible shift from one destination to another. But it's still with free will, if it's honest and you invest the energy to do the things you need to do to change your destination, everything is still possible. I've seen people developing within days, hours, weeks from, from uh, a total mess to fully conscious, highly evolved spirituality just because they wanted to and they were willing to to go through everything necessary they needed to go through to get there. This is our time quality. It's it's amazing. Well, we're coming up to uh, an hour. Do you have any seasonal greetings to give to, to, to the wider community? And also, you've had many wise presentations in the past. Anything you want to sort of Round up about those. Um, I I think the 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 only thing, if you want to blend in my my um, company page, Aquarius minus Technologies dot e, you do find a number of publications that cover the entire field of transhumanism, how it works and how the health damage looks like done by those technologies and how to fix the health damage. This is kind of the only part of professional advice I can give to counteract the things we are subject to. And for everything where, uh, where we are not subject to, but where we are in any case in full self-responsibility, um, I really again want to recommend that general approach offered by Arne Arlingham on zingdat.com because he, for my taste, my experience is just giving the best protocols for health sealing I've ever seen. The most effective ones, the most generalized ones, it outperforms anything I gave out before uh, based on my own experience. That's so, a big deal. That's a big vote of... That's a big, yes. Yeah. Yes. Some people say he's too new agey, but I, I think this is just due to his artists and web designers who give that impression to the website. If you Once you go into the... Um, uh, text and his truth. He's so into self-responsibility and freedom and non-guru behavior um, that there is nothing new agey about him. He doesn't intend to save anyone. He exactly knows that it's all about self-healing and all about self-responsibility and all about free choices. And there's nothing pushy. He just shares his experience and uh, in a way that it's easy for everyone to follow his protocols to get where he got by now and not further because he doesn't share things that are not set for him. So... Yeah, this is what I can recommend for medical purposes, self-cleansing, diet recommendations, everything. My former company page and then for spiritual practice to think that. Well, that's amazing. That's a big deal. Harold, it's really good to see you uh, again in 2020, anytime at all. And um, finally, could you give a little bit more sort of... Um, the thing about where you have your community and and what's involved, I mean, how does people, what are the things that people shouldn't go, the do's and don'ts, I mean, what, what's, what would waste people's time, what would be the, what would be the ideal thing for, for, so you don't have this friction or whatever you, you've gone through? Yes, yes. Uh, as much self-responsibility on the material plane as possible. When, when we started, I was buying all the houses for the people, like to keep the, the ownership and some sort of control centralized on the properties, having people here as my guests. And that was a big mistake. Now, when everybody is looking after himself on that level, um, it's easier to focus on the actual spiritual processes. 
because uh, there are there's no no template for codependencies on the material plane. Um, so this is something I can recommend that you keep basically your private life, your material life in independence from whoever you want to build community with. And then you can make the the shared domain grow and shrink in a way you feel like exactly looking for the distance or closeness you need for the actual spiritual process. And then the rest can come with uh, inspiration and uh, inspiration and self-healing. And uh, things under pressure go slower, things that develop freely go the quickest. Okay, well, that's excellent. Merry Christmas, or what would you prefer? Whatever, Merry Christmas, uh, Hanukkah Tova, <laughs> <laughs> or I don't know what the, what the Muslims feast at this time of the year, whatever it is, or just stick to the divine itself. And Good. Be all blessed. Good. Well, thank you very much for coming to Basis 2020, our online only conference uh, due to circumstances. It's just a joy to see you. Um, uh, bye for now. Okay. Bye, Miles. Have a great bye rest bye. of the year. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Goodbye.